So France are the first finalists in this year's World Cup and my prediction to say that France will be in the World Cup final was correct. I don't want my prediction that I actually think France will win the FIFA World Cup. I don't want that prediction to be correct but I am very glad and quite happy and proud that myself not only have I predicted France correctly to go all the way and get into the World Cup final but also my prediction for Belgium to finish in third place should they win the third place playoff game on Saturday but uh, yeah there's only one team that I want to win this World Cup right now but France have got the first spot in Sunday's huge heavyweight encounter final in this year's World Cup and this is a match view of the first semi-final as France faced Belgium this evening in well, this is not an exam in England, isn't it? It's just a, a World Cup match review. I just thought, as these are the final four games of the World Cup, that I won't just match review the England games, but I'll be reviewing every single World Cup game from now till the competition ends. And that's what, only like three games. So, uh, yeah, let's jump into this. And uh, France against Belgium was a, was a tasty encounter. Um, these two sides were two sides that many people predicted were going to go all the way. Um, Belgium were in our group. And because they finished in the top spot, and uh, we finished, I think yeah, we finished in second uh, in second spot. That is why Belgium got, you know, they got Brazil in the quarterfinals. Um, they got they got Japan in the round of sixteen, and then they got um, Brazil in the in the quarterfinals. Um, so they got you know a trickier set of games than England did. And uh, as I've said, you know, there's a reason why Gareth Southgate, you know, rested uh, most of the starting eleven when we did face Belgium in the group stage. But uh, this was, you know, Belgium's strongest side, France's strongest side. And uh, this game, and I, you know, didn't do a match preview, but if I had, I would have predicted lots of goals. You know, either, you know, I, I originally was going to go with Belgium to win 2-1 or France to win 3-2, going either way. But I just thought because there's so much quality on the field that there was going to be so many goals. And in actual fact, it was a very, you know, tight cage in close affair. And the reason why it was so contested is because you're looking at two very, very good sides. I mean... France and Belgium are absolutely sensational. Not just at defending, but going forward. And, you know, it was just one little bit of quality that uh, France, you know, had. And that just that, that set piece that just caught Belgium off guard, got France the goal, and they managed to, to hold on to what they had. And, you know, it was one of those games which, you know, every single, you know, player out there had a responsibility, had a job to do. And most of them executed it rather well. A couple of players had a couple of you know, off moments. And um, it was a game which both sides dominated. You know, and they really did dominate. You know, Belgium dominated the first kind of 10, 15 minutes. Then France kind of came into their own. Um, then Belgium kind of came back into it. And then in the second half, France started it really well. Got themselves a goal while they were dominating. Belgium then dominated. And it became very much like a chess match. You know, each side had individual moments of dominance, but in the end, you know, France just, just edged it. And, um, you yeah, know, obviously as an England fan, I was sitting here and thinking to myself, who do I want in the final should England beat Croatia tomorrow night? Which I do actually think we're going to beat Croatia tomorrow night. So I do think we're going to, you know, bag ourselves a place into the, the World Cup final. We have to wait for my match preview tomorrow. However, you know, I wanted Belgium to win tonight first and foremost, and you know, subsequently I have uh, changed my um, answer to that um, because I feel that Belgium are weaker defensively, um, but Belgium are stronger going forward. So you know, you know France are are better defensively, Belgium are weaker defensively, um, but that Belgium are brilliant you know, going forward, you know, France may be absolutely brilliant at, you know, defending, but I felt Belgium were, were better because they've got Lukaku, Fellaini, Hazard, De Bruyne, um, they've got so much quality that are coming in from multiple angles and directions that it would be very, very difficult to kind of, you know, try and keep them quiet. I mean, France did it, but France are so, you know, solid and organised at the back that it kind of made sense, really. Um, and they, they did a fantastic job of, of keeping them at bay and keeping, you know, a very, very frightening Belgium attack inside quiet. Um, you know, in terms of France, they've got Kylian Mbappe, who is a superstar. Obviously, they've also got Griezmann, Olivier Giroud, and you know, if you do keep Kylian Mbappe quiet, you're already, you know, giving yourself a bit more of an advantage because he's the danger man. He's the difference in this France side. Um, but I mean, they've got so much quality. But you know, personally, when the game first kind of kicked off, I was like, yeah, I, I'd rather have Belgium because I feel like we could really cause some problems. But then, as I was looking at it, I was thinking to myself, 
yeah, I, I kind of want France now. Belgium look quite scary going forward. But having said that, France look absolutely brilliant going forward and they look as scary as Belgium did. So I think, you know, it's a World Cup final. It is not going to be an easy game no matter who you come up against. So, you know, in the end, it, it doesn't really matter and I didn't really care who had gone through. Um, yeah, like, as I, as I was saying, uh, killing Mbappe were, was the difference in, in some parts. He's absolutely... He's just... He's going to be, you know, the best player in the world at, at some point or another, you know. He... Some of the stuff that he did tonight... and. Um, the fact that he's so young and he just has this clear mindset that he looks like he's he's on a pitch showered with some of the best players in the world and yet he looks like he's the best player on that pitch. He was so good. There was a moment where he passed the ball into Giroud and did like a back kick and he was absolutely sublime. You know the moment that I'm talking about, right? And he was absolutely sensational down that left-hand side. I thought Olivier Giroud tonight didn't get himself goal, but... Some of the work that he puts in, and I'm a big Olivier Giroud fan, I've always been a big Olivier Giroud fan. I may have given him some criticism in the past when he was at Arsenal, but he works. He works his ass off. I mean, at times, he was, you know, almost like a midfielder tonight. He was that good. He was that impressive. And he tracks back. He works hard. And, you know, what is great about Olivier Giroud, and the reason why he is the number nine ahead of, you know, Alexandre Lacazette, the, you know, France have got, you know, so many sensational, you know, attacking players. But there's a reason why he plays um, just in front of, you know, Anton Griezmann. And that is because he holds up the play so well that he has the ability to allow his, his pacier teammates to break it. He holds the play up, slots it into either Mbappe or Griezmann or even Matuidi, and you're in. And he does it so well. You know, his aerial threat is, you know, sensational. And just the way that he holds the ball up, it, it's just, he, he's got such an, an effortless way and a selfless way of being able to control the ball up in the field. He might not score bundles and bundles of goals, but he has got that ability to score sensational goals. But he's also mainly, particularly in that France side, he helps Mbappe, Griezmann, between the shine. And he also, you know, because defenders have got to man Mark Giroud that they forget about Mbappe and Matuidi and they were allowed to then drift into space and cause you problems. And I thought Giroud tonight was absolutely brilliant. You know, he came off um, late in the second half. He did pick up a slight injury, I think, as well. But um, he did absolutely brilliantly tonight. Um, and the French defence were, were sensational. The goal came from one of their centre-backs, Samuel Umtiti, from a set-piece. The corner was whipped in. This was in the 51st minute after a first first half of, like I said, right at the start of the video, you know, Belgium dominating in parts, France dominating in parts, Lloris and Courtois making a couple of decent saves, and both teams having some really, really good chances. Um, Belgium hit the post at one stage, France had a really good opportunity that really made, you know, Hugo Lloris work, but in the second half, it came from a set piece, and Fellaini was marking him titty, and as the ball came in, um, Titi, you know, beat Fellaini, but I think Fellaini got a slight touch onto it as well, so it went into the back of the net, and, like, it was just one of those where, you know, Fellaini, I don't think, he, he couldn't have got himself into a position or get heading that ball away or getting that ball away, and um, Titi was really clever in the way that he kind of positioned himself to get just above Fellaini, but he knew the contact that Fellaini was going to get to him made that ball go into the back of the net, and, you know, Courtois was not going to save that, you know, one single, you know, for one single moment. Courtois wasn't going to save that. And uh, in the end, then, France just, you know, held on to what they had, and, you know, Belgium r really, I mean, Lukaku had a very, very quiet game. He didn't get enough service, and his service wasn't really, you know, he didn't get, you know, decent service. I thought one player that had a very, very poor game tonight was Kevin De Bruyne. Um, we've seen him in the Premier League, you know, this season. He's been one of the best players in the world this season, and he's just, he, he didn't do anything. You know, he kept making mistakes. Uh, he's, you know, ball positioning, you know, his passing, you know, his, his supply into his teammates um, was, you know, quite underwhelming, frankly, and it wasn't particularly great, and he had a very, very poor night. I thought Hazard had a very, very good game, created a couple of decent chances, but in the end, he kept getting fouled to the point where it was really hard for him to make an impact into the game. Um, I thought also uh, Fellaini had a, a, a decent um, game, despite, you know, being at fault for the goal. But, uh, you know, he... he was there to, to do a job and, tr and try and, you know, stop the, the French forward line into getting into dangerous positions. Um, but um, back into and talking in regards to the French side, I thought Angola Kante was, you know, absolutely amazing. And uh, he is the best midfielder in the world, in my opinion. I mean, I've always said that. I've maintained that for at least the last kind of two, three years. He's just, he does his job so easily 
and there's just one job that you expect N'Golo Kante to do and he does it and he does it easily and you know to his credit he, he just performs so well when he does it and uh, I also have to give a special mention to Paul Pogba you know a lot of criticism has been given to Paul Pogba in recent times, saying that he doesn't, you know, work enough for the team. He doesn't do the dirty work, all he's interested in going forward. And, yeah, I would say that at times Paul Pogba certainly could be like that. But tonight, he worked, he tracked back. In, in some cases, he was almost acting like a centre-back. And that French side worked their arse off and they so deserve their place in the World Cup final. I think Belgium did play particularly badly tonight. You know, taking away, you know, Kevin De Bruyne I and mean, he didn't have a particularly great night. But, you know, they didn't have a shocking night, you know, the Belgium side. But in the end, France is just that little bit of quality and their their hunger, desire and determination to hold on to what they had puts them into the World Cup final. And I think, you know, Belgium have had a brilliant World Cup and they've done very, very well. And, uh, you know, in the end, if they finish, they're either going to finish third place or in fourth place. So you know, finishing third or finishing fourth. And that is a decent World Cup for them, in my opinion. They've done it better than a lot of the other big teams. So they should be proud of themselves. So it's never, ever easy going out of a World Cup semi-final. Just waiting until I sit here tomorrow night and I'll let you know how that feels should England not do particularly well tomorrow night. But, uh, yeah, France take the first spot in Sunday's World Cup final. But the next question that everyone's going to be asking, who will be joining them, England or Croatia? Stay tuned tomorrow, another match preview, another match review, and this will be the big one, the semi-final as England face Croatia. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Take care, see you later. And uh, please make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're only around here. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down in the comments section below. Follow me on Twitter at djbappers1998. And until next time, it's djbappers signing out. Take care. And I shall speak to you all later. Take care and I shall see you all tomorrow. Peace out.